So I decided to start from the conclusion, and then I will make some historical remarks. Uh, so this is the subjective that is uh, strongly personally biased to the list for the post-Newtonian two-body problem. Uh, it is clear that it is very impart important to compute force post-Newtonian uh, gravitational wave luminosity for two-point mass systems, because then it will be possible to construct more accurate templates, to be more precise, four and a half post-Newtonian accurate templates for inspiring compact binaries, and then these templates can be used in an analysis of data collected by gravitational wave uh, detectors. From the same reason, it is important to compute within the post-Newtonian framework uh, higher order tidal corrections to the dynamics of uh, binaries made of uh, at least one neutron star. Uh, by the high order, I mean at least first post-Newtonian order corrections to the leading order tidal effects. This is important because uh, it will improve the extraction of information related to the <clears throat> neutron star matter equation of states from observation of gravitational waves. Uh, the next two issues are less uh, obvious and more technical, I would say, but I think that they are quite important. The first one is related with the <clears throat> uh, obvious fact that high-order perturbative solutions of a two-body problem are uh, complicated. They are complicated both from computational point of view, but also from conceptual point of view. And the history of uh, achieving analytical results is full of mistakes, wrong uh, results, not counting uh, uh, misprints, of course. And uh, therefore, I think it is highly desired to have more than one independent derivation of any analytical result achieved. So, in this spirit, for example, <clears throat> it would be useful to make independent derivation, for example, within the ADM Hamiltonian approach uh, of high order gravitational wave lum luminosities for two point mass systems. As far as I know, the third post Newtonian luminosity was computed only once. Am I right? Yes. Also, all successful uh, computation of four post-Newtonian equations of motion were done uh, for uh, binary members modeled as point particles. That is, Dirac delta distribution were used in uh, energy moment tensor. It would be nice to have uh, some other uh, um, derivation made of some extended body models. And the last issue is related to the previous one, because uh, uh, usage of Dirac delta sources uh, obviously leads to ultraviolet UV divergences. And because general relativity is a purely classical theory, one could expect that all the regularization issues caused by this should be uh, removable purely in three-dimensional space. But this is not the case. It seems that the only uh, tool to resolve UV dimensional, uh, 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 dimensional divergences is dimensional regularization. There were attempts to improve Schwarz distribution theory, because this is quite obvious that standard distribution theory is not well suited to use it in highly nonlinear theory, like general relativity. For example, Luc Blanchet and Guy Guillaume Fay developed the so-called extended Hadamard regularization purely in three dimensions. It was when they tried to compute uh, 3PN equations of motion. This generalization was not totally successful <clears throat> because finally it was not possible to use them to obtain the unique equations of motion. Uh, but this is the bad news, but the good, the good news is, is that finally they obtained the result which was almost identical with the result obtained using dimensional regularization. The difference was in one ambiguity parameter. And the second good news is that uh, they 
inspired mathematicians, exactly uh, their papers on extended Hadamard regularization to devise a new theory of distributions that is called the theory of thick distributions. Uh, unfortunately, this theory is still not suitable to use in post-Newtonian equations of motion. But anyway, one can ask the questions, is it possible to look for some new extension or modification of the Schwarz distribution theory that would be suitable for three-dimensional regularization? The obvious um, uh, thing is that then such a theory would simplify a lot higher order post-internal computation. Because you should remember that, as I already mentioned, answering to the Professor Buonanno question, that uh, up to fourth post-Newtonian order, the huge part of the computations is related with the near zone equations of motion. The tight part is relatively simple from the computational point of view, not from the conceptual point of view. OK, so how much time is left? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Not bad. OK, so let's. <clears throat> Uh, go to some more details. Mm. As we know, the two-body problem can be uh, divided into two sub-problems, the problem of finding equations of motion and the problem of uh, computing gravitational wave luminosities. Equations of motion start from the Newtonian level. All uh, next levels are completely worked out up to the fourth post Newtonian level. And here we have luminosities you see that there is a shift between the two lines because the first radiative reaction effects can be seen at the level of equations of motion at two and a half pn level. It means that knowing this, you can just from the equations of motion derive the leading order luminosity, textbook formula for luminosity of two body systems. As I said, there are UV divergences when one uses point masses modeled by Dirac delta distributions. And I will concentrate on this UV divergences. But before this, several historical remarks. Two body problems in post-Newtonian framework began more than 100 years ago. The first correct computation of 1pn equations of motions was by Lawrence and Roste in 1917. Then more than 50 years later, Damour and Deruel successfully completed second post-Newtonian equations of motion, a second and a half in fact. They were inspired by discovery of binary pulsar of Hals and Taylor. The 3pn and 4pn computations were totally inspired by the needs of gravitational wave astronomy. But it is useful to mention also the three, uh, three and a half pn equations of motion. These are uh, radiative equations which are first post-Newtonian correction to the leading order radiative re reaction equations of motion. Mm, the first series attempt was, the attempt was here done by Balaer and Clifford Will. Uh, they used the known formulae for the fluxes of energy and uh, angular momentum, and they have written the most general formula for the equations of motion, which is compatible with these known fluxes. It was very useful, for example, for checking the later derivations of, of equations of motion. As I said, at the 4pn level, the only equations of motion was, uh, were uh, derived for point particles. So what can, what, what, uh, one can ask, why is it reasonable to use Dirac deltas in general relativity at all? The first, what I have already mentioned, it simplifies uh, computations. But there are some more, <laughs> say, physical arguments. Uh, there are some arguments known uh, as effacement principle um, uh, for compact and strictly non-rotating bodies, it was strictly proved by Damour many years ago. This uh, statement uh, sounds that uh, up to four and a half post-Newtonian order, there is no difference between neutron star equations of motion or black hole 
equations of motion. It means that there are no traces in the equations of motion of, on any information on the sizes and internal structure of the bodies. And uh, Dirac Delta seems to be ideally for this because they introduce into uh, tensor uh, energy momentum tensor only information about the masses and the positions of the, of the sources. But uh, Dirac deltas can do more in general relativity. Uh, we know that quite useful, for example, from numerical relativity point of view, uh, brilliant with solution of time symmetric two black hole initial value problems problem. And this solution was originally obtained by uh, studying the vacuum constraint equations of general relativity. But this solution can be easily recovered using the energy momentum tensor with Dirac deltas. And finally, strong a posteriori argument that uh, dimensional regularization together with using Dirac delta sources finally give unique conservative equations of motion up to the 4 pn order and unique gravitational wave luminosities up to 3.5 pn order and uh, more recently also for four and a half pn order, at least for circular orbits. 3 pn conservative two body equations of motion were derived independently by three groups using three different formalisms. But what is important is that um, there are also some derivations use, which use, use extended body models. One of them, namely uh, made by Itok and Futamaze, also with some contribution by Asada at the lower orders of approximation, uh, they reached the third Positonian order. This was very important and nice derivation made uh, in, in the 80s by Grishu and Kopeikin. They just uh, modeled the interacting bodies as spherical balls made of perfect fluids. More recent uh, re-derivation of the second post-Newtonian equations of motion was by Patty and Will, which in developed by them direct integration method, uh, direct integration of the relaxed Einstein equations method. And as I said, uh, few times already, there are also three independent derivations of the force post Newtonian dynamics. Uh, the very recent uh, derivation was done by a group related with effective field theory approach. And this is the excerpt from the recent paper. Uh, they are very optimistic because <clears throat> in the introduction, they conclude that they provide uh, an ambiguity free and systematic derivation of the renormalized Lagrangian in dimensional regularization, all within the confines of the post expansion, which can be naturally extended to all orders. So as I said, this is uh, to some extent answer to your uh, Satya question that they are quite optimistic. I don't know whether uh, Ricardo Sturan is with us. Okay, so you will you will be commented this, I think, in, in, in your, yeah. Okay, so, <clears throat> but, uh, as you know, uh, the most important application is the phasing of, of binary systems. This phasing is done by <clears throat> assuming for circular orbits that this kind of balance equation is fulfilled to any post order. So the time derivatives of the bounding energy is exactly equal to the minus gravitational wave luminosity. And up to 4 pn order, all is known, but there are already some results at fifth post order. Here there is a binding energy of the two-body system expressed in terms of the some uh, gauge-independent parameter x, which is related to the angular frequency along circular orbits, and the symmetric mass ratio nu. Nu is equal to m1 times m2 divided by m squared. So it ranges from 0 to 1 fourth. But what is important, there is some strange <coughs> thing in the literature, namely <coughs> at each pn order, the highest in nu coefficient uh, 
has the power which is the number of the PN approximation. So for example, um, at fifth PN order, it will be new to the, power, to the power of five. And then by careful analysis, you can check that this term depends only on the terms in the equations of motion, which are linear in G or come from the special relativistic uh, contribution. And uh, many years ago, Ledwinka, Schaefer, and Bichak computed closed form ADM Hamiltonian in one post Minkowskian uh, uh, approximation. And from this, one can easily compute this fifth PN order coefficient with this result. And in 2014, FOFA, using effective field theory methods, computed the 1 PM Lagrangian. And as an application, they computed the same coefficient with this result. I have, a few days ago, uh, checked carefully the archive and the web pages of the physical review uh, journals, and there is no explanation of this discrepancy. Okay, uh, how much time? Two minutes. Okay, so I will skip the rest. I will only show you that uh, because of complicated results, uh, computations, the results of the computation is also quite complicated. Please look. Uh, at the force post Newtonian zone Hamiltonian, fully explicit. It looks like this. <clears throat> and now, uh, the last remark on the three dimensional improvement of the uh, Schwarz distribution theory. I have to skip all this stuff, and I will <clears throat> use the last uh, slide only. I have mentioned this thick distribution, which was inspired by the work of uh, Blanchet and Fay. And uh, in their paper, in which they formulated this theory, there's a very nice uh, statement about the Dirac delta and physics. So maybe I will uh, just uh, end my presentation with this, with this uh, um, Citation. It is not correct to say that the work of Lawrence Schwartz justifies everything that physicists do with Dirac delta function, because sometimes they do things that are clearly wrong. There is a spectrum of responses to the situations. There are four responses. The first, chosen by too many mathematicians, is to dismiss distributions as untrustworthy a kind of pornography that should be kept out of the hands of engineering and science students. The second answer is, uh, another adopted by many practitioners, is to rationalize after the fact whatever interpretation of the symbols gives the right answer in the problem at hand. But sometimes this is done in blatant contradiction to interpretation adopted in other contexts. So it is not also very nice. But there is still another <coughs> approach. A safer approach is to regard the delta function as a heuristic device that leads rapidly to formulas whose correctness must be rigorously verified, e.g. by substituting a putative solution back into a differential equation. But what cannot be satisfied just with this? And the final, the most correct answer to this problem is as follows. If distributions are ambiguously defined as linear functionals on spaces of test functions and their properties must be unambiguous, and the mathematician should determine which formulas are, and calculationary rules are true and why, tightening up definitions when necessary. So I think this is an open question, and maybe there is some space for devising a new theory of distributions which would be perfectly suited to use in general relativity. Thank you. Are there some quick questions? Yeah, Alessandra? So uh, my question is about this um, difference at 5 p.m. that uh, you mentioned. I uh, was not aware in the binding energy, you said. Mm -hmm. um, so as you know, there have been the recent result by uh, Bern et al. at the Lagrangian or Hamiltonian at 3 p.m. So I guess also that uh, result would give a uh, Yes, but there is nothing they, about they, this. 
I have checked this. There is no word about this discrepancy. But they have said in the paper that they checked uh, results in the literature, so they, they must agree. But which one ones? Or... Which ones? There are. Sorry? Put back the slide. These are, so, these numbers are very different. This is not for PM. This is fifth, fifth PM. Yeah, I know, but I think this has been sorted out. I mean, I don't think so, but I think this has been sorted out. I mean, I was not in that paper, but um, I think this has been sorted out. I mean, the, the, yeah, the one P, the, the standard one PM result is correct. The one over five hundred. Okay. So which one is correct according to you? Okay, I wouldn't bet my right hand, but I can check. I can check. But this has been sorted out. I don't remember huge, which way, but it's a huge difference out. between the two. So yes, it better be resolved. Anyway, uh, my question was about the abasement, uh, you know, assumption. Uh, with spins, it won't be valid, and I wonder whether for large spins, how much that assumption is going to break down, because it's extremely important to have right answer for binary neutron star measurements. And if that's not going to hold, mm -hmm. we should know, because we are getting more and more binaries with neutron stars measuring the equation of state. Uh, we don't want it to be biased by that. So what's your take on what if the rotation, if the spins are large, uh, what could be the effect? I don't know, because uh, as I have mentioned, the precise uh, proof of this is for non-rotating bodies. So it is a sum. Well, what if there are other fields? Would that? What do you mean by other fields? Scalar fields and addressed neutron star in the gate change, right? It it won't be the same. I this, mean, you can't I use know. that. This I don't know. You see, because you see, the the, the, the Damour proof is a very precise Damour. He he just showed that near the body, the metric there is a some region around the body where the metric is a Schwarzschildian like. So it is described only by one parameter, the yeah. gravitational mass of the body. This exactly. Is a if there are other, that's what I'm saying, if there are other fields, then I don't then know. It would, it it would, would not. It, it should be checked. Yeah. I don't know the results. Yeah. 